Yes, in today's video we are back on the TVR and I am going to attempt to start it. Um, I have no idea how this is going to go. Before we do try and start it though, there are a few things that we have to do. And one of those things is fix the immobilizer so we can get the ignition. Uh, now in the last video I showed you that black wire that was in there that doesn't go anywhere and a lot of you guys said that is actually a wire for the immobilizer. So I'm hoping that I can either try and fix it with the interior in or if I have to remove the interior, uh, again, fix the wire and then hopefully that will give me some sort of ignition so then we can hear the fuel pump prime, hopefully, uh, and then, yeah, try and turn that engine over. Now, I've ordered some fogging oil because I couldn't get any anywhere, so I've had to order some, so I'm hoping that obviously turns up in time. So what we'll be doing is I believe the spark plugs are under this little uh, plaque here. So there's three Allen key bolts and I think I have read online that there's a load of sealant there as well. So we might need a standing knife or something to cut it up. Um, yeah, take the spark plugs out, spray some fog and oil down into the bores and then I'll try and turn it over by hand. I think the, there's a crank bolt down in that gap where my finger is. So we'll try and turn it over by hand. Hopefully it will turn over. Um, and then what we'll have to do as well is check the engine oil uh, because no doubt that might be a bit sludgy so we'll check that have a look at it and then also we have to have an alternative fuel source because the fuel tank is that square box there but if there is any fuel in it it will be absolutely horrible so I'm not too sure if that is the fuel pump if it sits in the tank or it's outside the tank i'm not too sure i need to find that out but we'll need to yeah find the fuel pump and then have an alternative fuel source so a quick google search tells me that the fuel pump is actually just behind that rear wheel on the near side rear of the chassis now if that is the case then that should actually be very easy to create an alternative fuel supply all i'll have to do is detach the um hose that goes from the pump to the tank and then obviously reroute it so it goes into a jerry can with five liters of fuel so that should be fairly simple to do but before any of that even matters i need to get power to the fuel pump which means i need to get an ignition which means i need to fix this wire which is in here oh. so i need to find out where it goes um i believe the unit is behind there oh i don't want to put my hands in there i don't know what's behind there um yeah so i'm gonna get a torch and have a quick look and see where I, if i can find out where this wire goes now i know it's gonna be quite difficult i've set the camera up best i can um but the first thing I want to do is there's loads of wires at the back here, which are some of them, the mouse or the mice have already broken the cable ties, but some cable ties remain. So I just want to cut those so I can have a better idea at where these wires are coming from and going to, and also see what else is broken. Because I need to know where this wire has come from. Ah, yes. I think, yeah, there we go. Ah, there we go. I can bring it out here. Bosh, there you go. Right, let's connect those three wires up and see what happens. Right, that is all four wires now soldered together there. And all I've got to do is plug it in to this cable, like so, and hope for the best. So that immobiliser cable is now all wired up to the front. I mean, there's still a very high probability that will have done nothing because mice could have been absolutely anywhere in this car and chewed all sorts of wires. So the chances of it just being this one that are cut are quite slim, but we try anyway. So let's start by... Unlocking the car. I'm still getting no immobilizer light, so chances are I probably not fixed it. No, didn't think it would. Damn it. Let's try again. Still no mobiliser light. Still no ignition. Uh, right, now you won't be able to see it from here, but let me just turn the torch on. I've just removed the cable ties for the immobiliser, pulled it out of its bracket over here, just pulled it right out so I could have a look. Um, and yeah, found another broken wire. And also, 
the unit seems to there's a lot of wiring behind here as well and I don't know if I'll stick my camera there so if you can see it but I don't know if you can see but there's a load more I don't know if your camera will pick it up but there's a load more broken wires in there I've just had a look with the mirror so so I think I'm gonna have to remove the rear bench I know I've got to do that anyway to take the body off but I was hoping I could try and obviously get the car running without having to mess around too much stripping the interior but after looking behind there with the mirror, there was a load more, probably another four or five broken wires. So I need to remove that rear bench so I can just have a look at exactly what I'm dealing with. And yeah, I mean, this could be the problem throughout the whole car. It could just be broken wires absolutely everywhere. So yeah, definitely got my work cut out. And I know at the beginning, I'm regretting saying that electrics I wasn't bothered with because that could actually turn out to be one of my main problems. So on to Google and how to strip a rear bench. So a quick Google tells me that, again, this isn't gonna be a simple task. I think there's bolts underneath the rear wheel arches to take the seats out. However, I'm just trying to take like the parcel shelf type um, thing off at the moment. I've just undone four screws that go either side of the seat and it seems to be wiggling out, I think. Let's see if I can swing it down. <sighs> Ooh, it's horrible, oh, actually. There's a slit in it, <laughs> you idiot. I've just sewn the, the seat belt covered it up, but there's a slit in it. I mean, there we go. Right, let's get this out of the way. All right. Trouble is, it's gonna be very difficult for me to get, because I can't even open that door. Now to start stripping, obviously, the rear bench, I need to get this door open and in the last video I said I can press the buttons and I can hear the clicking but the door will not open so again I'm assuming there's probably some sort of mouse uh, chewing going on uh, a quick Google tells me that these two wires here on the control unit for the doors um, are responsible for opening the door so apparently if you can just bypass everything and put power to these two switches uh two wires sorry then that should hopefully open the door so i have just set that up i've unplugged it i've put two wires in the terminal and i've put some power on it all i've got to do is turn this to 12 volts and i'm hoping it opens the door so let's find out no <laughs> Right, so putting power down the wires that lead to the door uh, motor did not work, which means there has to be a break in the wire between, um, yeah, between here and the door latch itself. Now, looking over the back here, and I mentioned that there are some broken wires down in this corner, and I can, you won't be able to see because obviously the screen's in the way, I don't think you'll be able to see down there, but I can see with the torch, two wires are, are identical to the wires coming out for the door latch. So what's happened is my good old friend, the mice have eaten the wires for the door. So I'm gonna have to really try and struggle to somehow get in behind the seat there to repair those wires so I can try and get this passenger door open. Right, so to remove the rear bench, there are some nuts under the wheel arch and to get to those, I have to remove the rear wheels. So I've just jacked the car off, off the ground and I'll remove the wheels and have a look, see what we're dealing with. Right, let's have a look. So, yeah, I mean, the nuts are absolutely knackered as well, so I'm gonna have to cut all those off, but there's one, see, one, two, and, oh, don't focus on my finger, and three there, look. So they're the three bolts that I need to get off to release the rear bench. Spider, thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's just absolutely horrible in there, isn't it? Does that mean is it? Right, so as you'd have just seen, uh, to remove the back of, well, to actually the headrest, where even is it? To remove this headrest here, um, there was a bolt in this uh, wheel arch here, up there, and for ages I couldn't still remove it, and it turns out, and, oh, one sec, torch. It turns out there's another bolt right in that gap on the uh, parallel side to this, and I had to get a, a spanner in there, 
and it made me feel sick putting my hand in that unknown massive hole <laughs> and undoing uh yeah undoing the other bolt because i had no idea it was in there and uh but anyway got it off and ugh, it's exposed it a little bit but I'd, if i'm honest looking at pictures um it's just going on looking at pictures all this is a fiberglass molding behind the seat cover anyway so i don't think even removing that will give me any more access to behind here so uh yeah i don't know if you can see let me just i'll put the camera in and try and talk from outside but there's the wiring that's broken and i don't know if you can hear me and two of the wires are the ones for this passenger door hopefully Right, sorry, it's very difficult to film in here. I mean, it's tight space as it is. Can't get any doors open, can't get the seats out, so I'm just working in a very tight space. Um, and I've had a look at, so I've, I've managed to get the wires here, look. So I've, there's about six wires that are broken. Um, this black one, I'm assuming, goes to, I don't know if that's the radio aerial or not. Um, but unfortunately, the wires that go to the uh, passenger door which enable me to uh, eventually open it they are I've just used the mirror they are like behind this trim here so I've got no other way to do it but to remove this trim I uh, don't know how I've just actually googled and yeah, there's nothing about removing this trim at all that I can find um, so I'm hoping it's just behind this speaker grill which I'm hoping I can just get this grill out and there's maybe some screws that hold it in and then that will become a bit more obvious. There is a screw there I've just undone but other than that it's complete guesswork and obviously I don't want to damage anything so um, positive update um, of the wires up here luckily there was a speaker there because literally as you can see four screws popped it out really easy and i managed to pull the wiring loom out that the mice have bitten through luckily they bit through all the wires so i could just pull the whole loom out and yeah they are my missing wires to go to there and i've also just found this connector here which has been bitten which is another two wires that come from here however it's not plugged into anything and i don't think it actually was because a there's the mouse can't unplug anything and b there are there is another lead down here similar to this one here look that's also not plugged into anything so i guess that's just a spare cable uh, as with this so i think i can disregard that for the moment so i'm going to connect up these wires now and hopefully that will give me an open passenger door and fingers crossed some ignition the door control module back in so fingers crossed come on I mean it's only got to go from there to there there can't be another break just open the door ready hey we have a door yes that is the first time that's been opened for a very long time one problem down, many, many more to go. However, still no LED light and still no ignition at all. So, however, now I've got this door open, I can actually see into the passenger footwell for the first time and there seems to be some sort of wallet thing. Let's just get that, I don't know what it is. And a V5? Oh, I might even have a V5. Hello? Right, let's just... Got a V5, look. Saves me applying for one. Let's just have a look. Yeah, I've got a, v5, a full V5. And uh, pleased to say, it's only got two previous keepers in its 22-year age as well, which is really good. Uh, the last owner looking at this has had it since 2004. Uh, yep, and the so he's had it. What's that? Eighteen years. Guy before that had it in two thousand two, and it was declared new October two thousand and one. So that is a very very good history. Now I have the previous owner here. His name is Neil Hartley from Nottingham. So if you're watching this or anyone knows him, please uh, ask him if there is a kill switch on this or anything that's stopping me from turning the ignition on before I get very annoyed. Thank you. And the next thing to look at is this little black book. Ooh. 
Owner's handbook. Car alarm, there we go. Already worked that one out, thank you. Not sure that tells me. Operate, ah, operate instructions, there we go. It's a nice read. I don't know if that's the same again. And we have, I'll read that in a second. Owner's manual, very good. Oh, this is very handy. Uh, oh, 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 there's even service history here as well. What we got, what we got? Oh, look at that, we have service history. Oh, get on. Oh, this is getting even better. Engine rebuild, that doesn't look too good. Uh, engine rebuild, well, I don't know, I, I suppose it could be a good thing. Engine rebuild at 30,000 miles. Oh, hang about. Oh, okay, no, that's fine. One engine rebuild. Uh, engine rebuild at factory. I'll take that. So it's had an engine rebuild only 17,000 miles ago. So make of that what you will. And it had another service at 42,000 miles. So there's only five, and another one at 45. So this, what, in 2006? Yeah, that's right. Is it? No, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, it's 2000. Oh, God, I'm getting confused. Yeah, 10 years. Years are catching up with me very quickly. 2007 seems 10 years ago, but it's not. It's 15. There you go. So that's a very, very, very good service history there. Um, perfect service history up until, obviously, uh, December 2008. However, um, it's done 49,000 miles. So it's got a full service history, even up to its mileage now. So I wonder why it's sat in a barn. Right, update time again. Let's jump in. Found another broken wire. Uh, this time one going to the left hand side. It's up here now. And again, I've just put another couple of uh, connectors in there just so I can get it working and make sure it's all connected up. And that actually powered my LED up here. So that now works. It's not flashing now because the alarm's disarmed. Um, but that now works. However, that is nothing to do with the immobilizer. I thought that was connected to the immobilizer in there, but it's not, that's just the alarm. My alarm system seems to be fully working. It is now my immobilizer. So I've just spoke to a company that specialize in the meta alarm systems for the TVR, and I've just gone through all my problems with it, well, exactly what's happening, and he just told me that my immobilizer is dead. Um, it was, I have Googled, it seems to be a common problem. They seem to have about a 20 year lifespan, and um, yeah, which is this unit here and he can send me a replacement one of these. Now, now, I don't want to spend money on this. It's very difficult. I want to fully strip it down, assess everything, and then go through the repairs. Now, I just thought to myself, well, I do 100% want to get this working, kind of regardless of cost, so I am going to need to replace the mobilizer at some point, so I might as well just do it now. Um, at least then I know the immobiliser is good, then we can get ignition, we can try and start the engine, blah, blah, blah. So um, I was like, yeah, I'll call you back before the end of the day, I'll, I'll make my decision. Um, but I, I'm, I'm pretty much calling back instantly. Bought it, he sent me a new, he's sending me a new immobiliser unit, it should be here tomorrow. So hopefully we can resume the video tomorrow, plug in that new system, and fingers crossed we get an ignition. So here it is. It looks slightly different from the old one because the old one is obsolete. Um, so this is still plug and play. So literally just plug it in and it should do the same job. Although it's slightly different in the fact that the USB slot under the radio um, will now be redundant. And instead we have this little um, button here, which is actually not, it's, it's just a button, which I think you can put into like valet mode or disable mode. But basically there's your LED that flashes and I have a key fob and it, it works the same as the old one in respect that it's got a proximity sensor on it. So as long as the key fob is within, I think five meters of the immobilizer, it will automatically disarm the car. Um, actually I can just plug it straight in. I don't have to cut anything out. Uh, no, it's literally just one plug, which is here. And I can just plug it straight in. So there we go. And that is it, that should be it. So here is my new fob, which I will have to use in addition now to the alarm because before 
the alarm was integrated with the immobiliser, so it did the alarm and the immobiliser, but now you can't do that, um, and it will never be able to do that unless you replace the whole system, so I'll have to use two separate fobs. Right, so this is now flashing, so we're, we're doing well already because the other LED never flashed. So, let's just... Right, so apparently the ID tag should automatically disarm the um, immobiliser as soon as I turn the ignition on. So in theory that means I just should have to press this button. No. Still absolutely nothing. Look what I've just done. I've literally even got goosebumps. I have an ignition! And the reason I have goosebumps is because it's taken me about three hours to get it. Um, now, as you just saw in the previous clip, I plugged the new immobiliser in and nothing was happening. Um, it was flashing, it was out of sequence, nothing is what it should have been, so I was like, oh, this isn't making sense. So I just called the company that supplied the ignition, uh, sorry, the immobiliser, uh, went through everything with him, and basically, I didn't know this, but the immobiliser wasn't actually my problem. Now, don't get me wrong, because the light wasn't flashing on it, it means it was defective anyway. However, it wasn't the issue uh, or the reason to why my ignition wasn't turning on, because apparently with the immobiliser, the ignition will still turn on, you just won't be able to... Uh, so basically, the immobiliser blocks the fuel pump and the starter motor, so you just won't be able to start it. So, therefore, I have another issue, or had another issue, and, yeah, that was the reason that it didn't work. Now, I've just spent, as I say, three hours trying to go through what the hell to do. So I'm gonna tell you exactly how I've just got that ignition to turn on. So Google is my friend, um, and I basically I've been checking loads of fuses. I mean, I've checked the fuses already, but I had to double check. Uh, the main, all the fuses, absolutely fine. Um, so I took the fuse board out just to make sure I've got power to my fuse board, which I knew I would have because my ancillaries are working, but I'm just double checking at this point. So then I went over to my ignition control unit to check my feed in, and I was only getting 0.3 of a volt, which was slightly concerning, but then again, I tested my uh, door control unit which I know now to be working and that was also only getting 0.3 of a volt as well so I didn't necessarily think that that was an issue so I went on to Google managed to get a wiring diagram up for the ignition control unit um, and yeah that should have a permanent feed into it so I just tested it and I only had 0.3 of a volt but when I put it to um, but when I put the power wire for the multimeter into here and then uh, chassis earth I was getting 12 volts so therefore to me that means there's a problem on the earth side because there's a lack of earth so what I've done as you can see is I've made a wire up I've bolted it to the chassis and I've stuck it into the earth side of the ignition control unit Bob's your uncle gone over and now I have ignition that was a very very long process I have ignition and that was my goal for today's video. Um, so we have an earth problem, basically. Uh, there is earth there, but there's not enough. So there's either high resistance, corrosion, or there's a mice or a mouse that has bitten half a wire. I don't know at this point. I'm gonna guess there's probably just corrosion on a wire somewhere. Um, and the earth that goes to is probably corroded. <laughs> so there we go. I have ignition, that is the main thing. So that is gonna be it for today's video, guys. Now, some of you might say that it's a 20 minute video and all you've actually done is just turn the ignition on, but that is just so far from like the work that's gone in to get this ignition to turn on. Now, this is a full restoration project and I don't feel I'll do the project justice if I skip over something that took me near enough three days to achieve. Um, because when I look back on it and when others look back on it, it, it makes it look like an easy process if I've taken five seconds on video to turn the ignition on. Now, I wanna document the full repair of this car and that includes things that take ages like this. Now, I'm sure most of you will probably appreciate um, the in-depth side of it and like the workings out to get to this point, if I just glossed over it, it might seem easy and not important when it, it is important. Um, so I'm gonna continue to document everything 
that I'm doing with this car, even if it's just 20 minute video just to get the ignition turned on, I think that is a crucial part of the restoration project. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I think most of you would agree with me. I'll probably get the odd person that wants everything to happen in a split second. But yeah, that is gonna be it for today's video, guys. So in the next one, I'm probably gonna leave that earth in there because I've got ignition, I've got some fog and oil, and I'm gonna try and start the car. Now I've done the ignition, I don't think I heard the fuel pump prime. I heard the blowers work. So that will be the next video, guys. It will be turning over that engine. So yeah, I hope you did enjoy today's video. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I have ignition, it works, and it even turns off. Cheers, guys.